Hey folks, my name is Rojo, and I'm here with Sneaks. We uh, just started up the game, and welcome back to Dark Souls Prepare to Die Edition. At the end of the last episode, we saw the intros, and uh, some mysterious knight dropped a thingy down here for us to grab, and uh, it happens to be the key to our cell, which is interesting in and of itself. Now, again, if you're not familiar with Dark Souls, don't worry too much. We'll, uh, we'll learn a lot of things as we go along here. This guy's kind of in a bad way here. If we want to, we can get real mean and just whoop his sorry, stupid ass with our broken sword. But uh, we're not going to do that too much. There's really no need to be dickheads to these guys. They're not worth much in the way of souls anyway. Souls are uh, essentially both gold and experience points in this game. So uh, you have to choose between buying stuff here and there to help you on your adventure and leveling up so uh, you know, it's an interesting dynamic now we also are running into an important mechanic bonfires bonfires are gonna set our respawn point when we die and oh boy is we gonna die a lot in this game I'm okay at Dark Souls but uh, not that good so plan on some deaths that will happen but uh, yeah, so basically when we when we die, we'll respawn at that bonfire, we'll lose all of our souls, but we'll get the opportunity to go and pick up our uh, blood stain, as it were. Definitely don't want to fight this guy yet. He is a giant asshole right now. You can kill him, by the way, if you're good at the game, uh, or if you it's easier if you take some different items at the start. But anyway, as I was saying, if uh, we were to if we were to die, we would get the opportunity to pick up our blood stain at roughly the spot where we died and then get our souls and stuff back. But, oop, yep, yeah, ate that arrow. First damage of the game. But, uh, yeah, if we were to die again while our blood stain was out, it would get erased from existence and we would have a new blood stain with whatever souls we had at the time. So, want to try and get the, the blood stain back, but sometimes you just gotta accept that the souls are gone, man. Like, it's that's just how it goes. Equip our bandit's knife here. I kind of like the bandit's knife, actually. Gets a bonus to critical hits. Um, so backstabs and parries, which we'll see momentarily here. This guy might even be able to get a backstab on him. There we go. Kablamo. Backstabs, of course, are going to do extra damage, as are parries. They do even more than uh, backstabs. However, the bandit's knife, really short range, uh, which is not so good for general combat. Doesn't do a lot of damage per swing either. Uh, we're gonna go down here. Actually, we're gonna go up here. There's a little bit of a trap here. You can see that. There's a, uh, a boulder that just went through there. It's a little dark. Let me try to fix that in post a little bit. I don't know. We'll, we'll see how it looks. And then I'll change my video settings as appropriate. There we go. We're rest of this one now. This is one we just activated. But uh, yeah, I'm fairly familiar with this game, so I'm kind of speeding through the Undead Asylum here a little bit. I will allow NPCs to do their dialogue and stuff so you can catch a little bit of uh, story and stuff, as is the case here. This is the fellow that actually freed us only moments ago. Oh, you. You're no Hollow. Thank goodness. I'm done for, I'm afraid. I'll die soon, then lose my sanity. I wish to ask something of you. You and I were both undead. Hear me out, will you? Now we do have a choice. We can not hear him out. We could kill him if we wanted to. But let's hear. Regrettably, I have failed in my mission. But perhaps you can keep the torch lit. There is an old saying in my family. Thou who art undead art chosen. In thine exodus from the undead asylum, maketh pilgrimage to the land of ancient lords. When thou ringeth the bell of awakening, the fate of the undead thou shalt know. Well, now you know. And I can die with hope in my heart. Oh, one more thing. Here, take this. An Estus flask. An undead favorite. Very important oh, item. And this. Now I must bid farewell. I would hate to harm you after death. So go now. And thank you. Also a very important item. We can still kill him if we want to. It looks like, like, is his blood green? Is that what's going on here? Or is it just a shadow? 
I guess it must just be a shadow making that shit super green. Uh, by the way, these little marks on the ground are... Actually, later on, there'll be marks from players since I am playing online here. Um, but they're also tutorials in this case. We're gonna go up here, though. This Estus Flask basically allows us to... Uh, allows us to heal. It actually failed my parry there. There we go. Which is a shame because the target shield has an additional... Uh, parry window, I guess you could say. It helps you, helps you parry more, uh, easily. And actually, I missed my, uh... Somehow I missed my counterattack there. I guess I was too far away from him, probably. But we'll lure this guy around the corner here. If you could be so kind, sir. I said, if you could be so kind, sir. Nope, that's not what I wanted. Here we go. Nope. This is uh, this is going poorly, actually. Well, let's not die here. <laughs> there you go. That's the Estus Flask right there. This is uh, yeah, a little bit embarrassing. So we have actually two types of attacks as well, which is pretty important to know. We have uh, strong attacks, and we have weaker attacks, which take up less of our stamina gauge in the upper left there. Blocking will also reduce our stamina. And uh, we got a couple other attacks we can do. For example, we let this guy, we'll let him do a shooty deal. We can uh, do a jump attack, like that. We can also two-hand our weapon. Even this this tiny little dagger we can two-hand, and that takes more stamina, but it'll do more damage. And sometimes changes the move sets a little bit as well for different weapons. There we go, that's how we parry. Alright. I don't know why I was having such a hard time with that. But there you go. Can't we can't get through that door yet. We will uh, actually come back here eventually. And I'm just gonna top myself off here. It's kind of a good idea to keep yourself topped off in this game, in my opinion. Because now we have to fight this dickhead. There's actually a thing, a little trick you can do. Let's say a plunging attack, by the way. If you jump off the thing and you do a plunging attack, it'll uh, do a lot more damage. Whoop, careful. Gotta manage our stamina. We can, because uh, we can roll to dodge attacks, as you saw there. Get the other one. There we are. Oh, there's a third one. Yep. <laughs> Forgot about that one. And we just actually got some bleed damage there, you saw. Um, he took a little bit of extra damage from one of those last swipes. Here's our Pilgrim's Key. Very nice. We're going to need that to exit. But uh, yeah, the if we get some humanity too. If we look at our equipment here, we can check out the... Um, uh, wait, no. How do I do this? Uh, I'll go status. I want to... No, I want to go here. And let's look at our weapon real quick. So as you can see in the bottom left there, there's that little splotch with 300 next to it. That is bleed damage, or bleed buildup, I should say. And if we get enough bleed buildup, enemies will take a, a chunk of bleeding damage, basically. Not all enemies are going to be super susceptible to it. Everything has its own strengths and weaknesses, of course. Um, but uh, yeah, we'll go over stats maybe another time in more detail. Not super worried about it right now. So we'll use our big pilgrim's key here and uh, mosey about our about our business. Now you hear that actually, you might see the screen shake and hear that, there's, I, I walked right by him, didn't even look at him actually. Down where we started, there's actually another one of those uh, demon guys, kind of similar to the one we fought. But a little bit different, he's got a little bit different move set. And uh, we will probably fight him eventually. But not right now, we're not going to worry about it. It's actually, if you'll notice, a, I don't want to walk off the edge here, but... Come back over here. There's a little, uh, little, little nest over there. We'll come back to play with that a little bit later too, probably. We can get some cool items anyway by uh, doing that. Let's get out of here. Only in the ancient legends it is stated that one day an undead shall be chosen. to leave the undead asylum in pilgrimage to the land of the ancient lords. Lordran.
All right, in Lord, you're gonna level up Kindle of Bonfires indeed. That's an important thing to note. Basically, uh, we will, we we're not gonna worry about kindling at the moment. Please go away. Thank you. <clears throat> but we will sit here and get our Estus back. As you see, we got 10 there. That is because this is a stronger bonfire than uh, the ones in the Asylum. We can do some leveling up here, and in fact, we will. Now, as I said, it costs souls to level up, and it's going to cost more souls every time we do uh, one level up. A few different stats to worry about here. We've got Vitality, which is going to increase our, uh, our HP. Attunement gives us more magic slots. Um, which are the two-man slots on the right over there and everything every time we level up We're gonna get a, a little bit better defense, which is important to note Endurance is gonna increase our equipment load, which is also kind of important and as well uh, Increase our stamina, which is pretty important. So uh, we'll be doing some some endurance for sure uh, Dexterity as you can imagine Helps us out with dex weapons, which our knife is a dex weapon uh, resistance at least primarily a dex weapon uh, resistance is just going to give us some straight up resists. And uh, intelligence. This is good for casting sorceries, and faith is good for casting miracles. So, there you go. We're going to start off with one point of strength, though. Because there's a particular weapon that I want to go pick up. And uh, we're going to do that actually right now. Well, uh, we're going to talk to this guy first, and then we're going to do it, but soon. So, if you uh, want to skip. Talking to this guy, you might want to skip ahead a couple minutes. Well, what do we have here? You must be a new arrival. Let me guess. Fate of the undead, right? Well, you're not the first. But there's no salvation here. You'd have done better to rot in the undead asylum. But too late now. <sighs> well, since you're here, let me help you out. There are actually... Two bells of awakening. One's up above in the undead church. The other is far, far below, in the ruins at the base of Blight Town. Ring them both, and something happened. Brilliant, right? Not much to go on. But I have a feeling that won't stop you. So, off you go. It is why you came, isn't it? To this accursed land of the undead? <laughs> so one thing that's interesting about this game is everybody seems pretty, uh, pretty crazy. Well, maybe not everybody, but a lot of people, and they got these creepy-ass laughs. Uh, but we'll continue talking to this guy for a second here. Ah, your face. You're practically hollow. But who knows? Going hollow could solve quite a bit. <laughs> Mm, what? Restoring your humanity? <clears throat> well, there are a few ways to go about it. Collect it bit by bit from corpses. Or you can butter up a cleric and get yourself summoned. And the quickest way, although I'd never do it, is to kill a healthy undead and pillage its humanity. Coveting thy neighbor is only human, after all. <laughs> Alright, that's actually some important advice, and so is the advice about the Two Bells of Awakening, actually. So I believe the intro uh, that we saw when we just got here, if I'm remembering correctly, said there is a Bell of Awakening. Didn't say anything about two. This is, this, I don't know if he has anything else to say right now. What are you looking at? Don't try anything clever. You might regret it. <laughs> After that advice, uh about killing an, a, a, a healthy undead and pillaging its humanity is like, ah, maybe I shouldn't have told him that. Mm -hmm. What? You want to hear more? Oh, that's all we need. Another inquisitive soul. Well, listen carefully then. One of the bells is up above in the undead church, but the lift is broken. You'll have to climb the stairs up the ruins and access the undead burg through the waterway. The other bell is back down below the undead burg, within the plague-infested blight town. But I'd die again before I step foot in that cesspool. <laughs> Alright, so uh, 
He's also confirmed that he is, in fact, undead here. You saw that ghost that just looked like he was fighting something and died? That was another player, actually. It's a pretty cool feature of this game, actually. I like it a lot. Uh, sometimes you can see, like, the echoes of other players. We'll, we'll learn a little bit about what's going on with that later on in, a, in, a, in another episode. Uh, anything else? Bloody hell, what is it now? You ask too many questions. Hmm? What now? I'm not up for chatting. Leave me alone. Alrighty, he's he's tapped out. <clears throat> Ooh, and this is a blood stain of another player. If we click that, we can see how this guy died. Is this the guy that just uh Oh no, he jumped in the well, yeah. You can jump in this well and uh it definitely leads to death. Without question. Um but yeah, so we got some humanity here, I guess. I don't know, I We'll, we'll try to go through some of the game as a human. It does matter in some areas, not in these earlier ones, but just to give you an idea. Oh, right, right. I actually have to use a humanity here. So if you use a humanity, if we, if we look at these real quick, um, by doing one of these. Rare tiny black sprite found on uh, corpses. Use to gain one humanity and restore a large amount of HP. The black sprite is called humanity, but little is known about its true nature. If the soul is the source of all life. What distinguishes the humanity we hold within ourselves? A little bit of lore to think about for you there, but essentially all you need to know is we're going to use this. We could use it to heal later on if we were missing HP, but we're going to get some humanity here. <clears throat> and that's going to go up in the upper left there. Now if we die, we're going to lose that humanity. It's not so uh, it's not so good. However, we can also use this humanity to reverse hollowing. It costs one. And reversing hollowing, as you saw, our face is kind of messed up there. But now... Hey, there we go. We look more like uh, more like this guy over here. If we die, we will lose this humanity. Another interesting thing about humanity is it actually helps you discover items in the world. One humanity is most useful for this, but um, you can absolutely uh, use, I think, up to ten. Now down here we have a very important lady, as you can see in here. She doesn't have anything to say to us though, but we can reinforce our Estus Flask and try to talk to her, but she can't speak. We'll, uh, we'll come back to her later. What's this, uh, what's this all about? Be wary of demon. Ah, yes, well, this, it'll become relevant later. We can actually jump down here. We, we go the, uh, the easy way as well, but I like to jump down and make it a little, a little bit risky. We're gonna come down here, actually, uh, before we go to the place that was recommended to us by the, uh, the crestfallen, uh, knight there. And pick ourselves up a weapon that we we'll may or may not use throughout the game. I, I don't know, I just want to try it out because I've never used this weapon type before. If people familiar with Dark Souls are probably already guessing what I'm about to go and pick up here. But uh, yeah, we can go ahead and jump down here. We actually got some hollows down here, but they're pretty harmless, so I don't like to mess with them too terribly much. And we do have the, the Master Key, which is going to allow us to un unlock some places earlier than we would normally be able to. Um, I'm not sure how much I'm going to use it yet, but we there's other places we could go right now that are definitely not... Where we want to go. This guy, however, he's in my way. I'm sorry about this, but you gotta go. This corpse has the Estoc. Very nice. We're gonna equip our Estoc like so. And this is a um, it's a thrusting weapon. We barely have the stats to uh, wield it because I got the I got the uh, required strength before we left. But that, that was a strong attack, it uh, does that slash, uses a ton of stamina though. And then the uh, regular attack is just a series of thrusts. We can two-hand this as well, of course. This is just a longer, longer thrust. And also, a shorter thrust. <laughs> so, we'll, we'll try the move to set out and see how we do. Um, I don't know, I've just ne I never really bothered using thrusting weapons in the past, so I just wanted to give it a chance, see how it does. Now unfortunately this does mean that, if you noticed before, we were rolling pretty fast. We're rolling a little chunky now, not, uh, not so good. I think Sneaks needs to be a little bit more nimble than that. So what we can do is we can actually take off some of our gear here. We'll lose some protection, yes, but we'll also be able to fast roll again. As we get more stamina, we'll be able to put some of that back on. I actually like the Thief set quite a bit. Um, just as far as looks go in particular, but it's, you know, the stats are, I don't know, they're 
fine, I guess, for light armor. Um, yeah, can't really complain too much, but here we go. All right, so we're uh, coming back up here. We got our weapon, and I think I'll probably probably call it an episode after we try this s talk out on some people, but there's also another NPC actually down near where we picked this, uh, this sword up that would uh, be interesting to talk to. We will, in fact, talk to him later because he sells some uh, interesting stuff and can do some good stuff for us. Let's see. Let's actually... Uh, one, one thing we can also do is if we want some more souls, we can crunch these types of things, Soul of the Lost Undead, etc. And that will give us some souls that we can spend on whatever it is we think we need to spend souls on. There are some other items that are uh, bumming around this place, but we don't really need to worry about it too much. I'm definitely not going to pick up every single item in this game. I can pretty much guarantee that, so bear that in mind. There we go. That's how you parry. And right in the dick with the S-Dock. All right. Find the s dock it's a little hard to use because I'm used to using like the straight swords. Oh jeez, I was trying to aggro this guy without getting hit, but then I flubbed it up. Um, ah, partial parry there, but not good enough. There we go. We ran out of stam a little bit there. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not used to using these thrusting swords. I'm used to having kind of a broad sweeping attack, which honestly kind of like makes things a little bit easier. Come on. Did not get my shield up in time there. Was uh, trying to decide what I wanted to do. Nope. Target shield definitely saved me on that parry. That one was a little bit too uh, too soon. Get another gentleman up here. Usually this guy actually runs down. Oh no! Oh! Oh no! We're gonna die! Oh you bitch! <laughs> First death. That didn't take long. I. I got pushed off the edge like a fucking newbie. So there goes that humanity. We, it's alright, we don't need humanity right now anyway. Uh, I just wanted to do it to show you guys. But yeah, we'll, uh, we'll end the episode there. We get to try the sword out. Next time, we will uh, actually go and uh, see about making some actual progress here. Um, I think I'll probably try to keep these videos, uh, I don't know, around 20 minutes or so. Um, between 20 and 30 minutes. Whatever, whatever feels good, I guess. But, um, also, yeah, I think I'm going to try and, even though the series is unscheduled, I'm, I'm going to try and do, like, at least two episodes a week, I think, probably. Um, just to kind of try and keep things going a little bit. But, at any rate, that's going to do it for this episode. So, uh, until next time, my name has been Rojo, and thanks for watching.